Welcome to Taisha's Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make unadon, or more specifically, a variation of that, hitsumamushi. So you may have heard of unagi from the TV series Friends. It's what the Japanese call unagi. It's a state of total awareness. And of course that is wrong. There are no Japanese words that sound similar to this, meaning state of mind. And unagi is a type of eel that lives in Japan. You may have seen it or eaten it in a Japanese restaurant as a type of sushi. But in Japan, these are almost always served over a bowl of rice and called unadon, short for unagi donburi. And this may be a little bit difficult for you to get hand on, but if you go to like a Japanese grocery store or large Asian supermarket, you may have this in the frozen section. And also in Japan, they are almost always sold pre-cooked like this. Or like most people, you go to a special restaurant where they only serve unagi. And today I'm going to show you a variation of unadon called hitsumabushi. And this is kind of specialty of a region where I come from, the middle section, the Tokai area. And the main difference is that one, it's cut up into small pieces, so it's easier to eat, but also it comes with different kind of condiments. So you can enjoy different kind of variation of the flavor. And I hope it kind of broadens up your horizon for Japanese cooking. And maybe if you have a chance to find this, you can give it a try. Then, let's get started. Here are the ingredients for hitsumabushi. If you're only making a regular unadon, then you don't need these. So you just need eel, unagi, and rice. And for the sauce, I have soy sauce, sugar, mirin, and sake. But it is also possible to make the sauce only with sugar and soy sauce, if you don't have access to mirin or sake. And I'm making today hitsumabushi, which is a variation of unadon. For the broth, I'll be using strapper kombu kelp and katsuobushi, or the bonito flakes. And then at the end, as a condiment, I have wasabi, scallion, and nori. Uh, if you don't have these, then it's also not a problem. For the unagi, I have here pre-cooked, pre-packaged eel. Even in Japan, nobody cooks this from raw eel, so it's pretty common to buy these pre-cooked package. Then let's start cooking. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is prepare the rice. I'm gonna rinse the rice first. For this recipe, I probably just need half a cup of rice, but cooking rice in a small amount is very difficult, so I'm just gonna cook double the amount and then eat the rest just later. So with Japanese rice, what you want to do is you want to rinse it just kind of lightly like this and then get rid of that water. You see how cloudy that water is? You want to get rid of that. So I'm going to rub the rice against each other without water like this. After you do that for about 10 to 20 seconds or so, I'm going to rinse it again and then I want to get rid of that cloudy water. And then I'm going to rub the rice against each other one last time. And then you see the water is still clouded. I'm going to get rid of this water. And then I'm going to rinse with running water again. And you see how the water is much clearer. That's how far you want to wash the rice. Now I'm going to rinse with running water one last time. The water is clear, I'm gonna throw that away. And then I'm gonna let this sit for a minute or so and then let the water drain. So a minute has passed, the water is clear. I'm gonna throw that water away and then put the rice back in the pot. Try not to lose any grain of rice. And then here I'm gonna put in one cup of water. So regularly when you cook rice, you want to have the ratio of one to 1.2. But today I'm making a donburi with things on top of it. I want to cook the rice a little bit more firm. And so I'm going to cook the rice with one to one ratio. And then this is finished for rinsing the rice. So you always want to rinse the rice like this when you have Japanese rice. And if you want to see more in detail video of how to cook the rice properly, please watch my other video on that. And then I'm going to let this sit for half an hour to an hour and let the rice soak the water. And you kind of see the rice being clear. Then after an hour, then you'll see all the rice grain will soak up the water. And let's go to an hour later. And the next thing I'm going to do is make the dashi stock. When you're using kombu kelp, you want to soak this in water overnight. So that's what I did. I have here a kombu kelp soaked in one cup of water since last night. And see how big it has grown. So this is about the same size. It has just grown so much and then thickness has gained as well. It also has given out the color like this. And that's what you want. For a cup of water, you want to have a strip like this, which is about two to three gram. And so I'm going to put that in a pot with a kombu kelp and then turn the heat to medium. 
let this cook right before it comes to boil. And here you don't want to boil the kombu kelp since uh, that will give out kind of like the bitterness of the kombu. So it is starting to form the bubble. I'm gonna take away the kombu kelp. And now I'm gonna turn the heat to low. And then we're going to measure the bonito flakes, or the katsuobushi. So for a cup of water, you want to have about five to seven gram of bonito flakes. That's good. You don't want to bring this to full boil. Slightly boiling is good. I'm gonna turn off the heat, and then put this bonito flake in the water. And then you want to let it wait like this for a minute or so. And then a minute has passed, and then I'm going to strain this with a strainer and a cooking sheet. And then you want to let this water drip on its own weight. And if you want to know more about how to make dashi properly, then please watch my other video on that. Then this is finished for making dashi. Let me have a little sip. Oh, that is amazing. This is just pure umami. Then I'm going to leave it to the side for later. Then next I'm going to make the tare, or the sauce, for the unagi. So when you buy a package unagi like this, they're already soaked in the sauce, but usually the sauce inside is not enough, to my opinion, so I'm going to make extra, because tare is really the key to the unagi. Then in a small pot, I'm gonna put one tablespoon of sugar, two tablespoons of meeting. If you don't have meeting, then another two teaspoons of sugar. And then here, also two tablespoons of sake. And I'm gonna turn the heat to medium. And then I'm gonna do here what's called nikiri, which is vaporizing the alcohol. Because both midi and sake have quite high alcohol content, each between 10 to 15%, so I wanna get rid of that alcohol. And so I'm gonna bring to light to boil. So this process you wanna do without the soy sauce because when you boil the soy sauce, you kinda lose the aroma. So be careful you don't burn yourself. Now once the alcohol has evaporated, then I'm going to turn the heat to low and then put in here 2 tablespoons of soy sauce. Then we're going to cook like this in low heat for about 3-5 to five minutes or so until the amount will be half. Now this has come half the amount. In the sauce, I'm going to put in the rest of the sauce that's in here because this has been soaking in this unagi and has all the goodness from the unagi. It's going to add extra flavor to the sauce. So I'm going to cut this open and try to get the sauce from here. Okay, and then I'm going to heat this up one last time. Then this is good. Finish, turn off the heat. I'm gonna have a little sip to try out. Mmm, oh, very nice. Full flavor. So here I made quite a lot of sauce. This is pretty much similar to teriyaki sauce. So you can save this up for other dishes. Now let's prepare the rest of the condiments. So for the nori sheets, I'm going to make small strips. I'm not gonna need a whole sheet. probably two of these small sheets is enough. Just cut them in small strips. Just like that. And then scallion in just small pieces. And that's finished for that. Now all the ingredients have been prepared, let's cook the rice. So this rice has been soaking in water for about an hour. You can see the rice has soaked up the water. It's all white. Then this is ready. To cook the Japanese rice properly, you want to bring it to boil with high heat. Then once it starts boiling, then turn down to simmer and cook for 10 minutes and then turn off and let it steam on its own for another 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna turn the heat to high and bring this to boil. So this has come to boil. I'm gonna give it a little stir so that it'll be cooked evenly. And then put the lid back on and turn the heat to simmer and let this cook for 10 minutes. So it's been 10 minutes, I'm going to turn the heat off. And here you don't want to open the lid, just let it sit for 10 more minutes. Now all the ingredients are prepared, let's finally prepare the unagi. So I'm going to take it out of the package. 
And I'm going to quickly wash this. If I grill this in the sauce, it'll kind of start burning. So just really quickly rinse this with water. Then once washed, then I'm just gonna kind of dry it a little bit with paper towel. And be careful that you don't press too hard because it's quite soft so that you don't break the piece. And just to make it easier, I'm gonna cut it in half. So I have the oven preheated in 200 degrees. And then I'm gonna place this right here and grill this for five minutes or so. So let's see. So this is looking pretty good. And then here I'm gonna put a little bit of sauce. Like this so that it gets a little bit of the roasted flavor to it. I'm gonna try to put it a little on the other side. Try not to break it. Yes. And let this grow for another two to three minutes or so. Okay, this is looking great and smelling really good. I'm gonna turn the heat off and take this out. So now it's looking great. So now I wanna prepare the dashi. I'm gonna turn the heat on here and then bring this dashi to boil. And while we're waiting on that, I'm gonna cut these unagi to small pieces. You can of course put these on top of rice just like this, and then you have a unagi, don, unagi donburi. But today I wanna to do a hitsumabushi style. So to do that, I'm going to cut these in small pieces like this. Oh, this is very hot, so be very careful. Don't burn yourself. So the dashi stock has come to a boil. I'm gonna turn the heat off and put this on a pot like this. And this is ready. And then let's put the rice and the unagi together. So when you use a shamoji like this, make sure to wet it first. And otherwise the rice will stick to it. So how you wanna prepare this, you wanna put a little bit of rice in the bottom like this. And then over it a little bit of sauce. Just like this. And then you wanna put like a couple pieces on the bottom. Just so that this will be evenly spread out. And then over it another layer of rice. And then over in a layer of sauce. And then rest of the unagi on top of it. And then over a little more sauce. Then this is finished, let's eat. Oh, this smells so amazing. Let's eat. Itadakimasu! So when you eat unagi in this hisumabushi style, then there's a certain way of eating this. So we don't directly eat from the bowl like this, and instead we put in small rice bowl like this. And then we eat it from this small rice bowl. Uh, first, I'm gonna eat it plain like this, without any condiments. Itadakimasu! Mmm, mmm. Mmm. Oh, this unagi is just so amazing. Mm. Oh, this is so great. Oh, this unagi is so soft, so juicy. And this tara is just so amazing to go with the unagi. Mm. And second way of eating this with different condiments. So in here you can put in either wasabi, scallion, or nori. So I'm gonna first try with this wasabi, just like this. Mm. Mm. So with the wasabi, it tastes kind of like unagi sushi. So you can kind of have a variation of this and adds a little punch to the flavor, great combination. And you can also put a little bit of scallion on top. Mm. Mm. This combination of scallion to unagi is also great. And you can also put a little bit of nori to it. That's also great. Mm. So nori gives a little little layer to the flavor. Mm. And then you can also combine these condiments. Got a little of wasabi, a little of scallion, and then also nori. I like this. Mmm. Mmm. 
Mm. So adding different condiments make it as if I'm eating a totally different dish. That's one way how we in Japan kind of change up the flavor. And the last way to eat this is so-called ochazuke. So here I'm gonna put in the little bit of wasabi, a little scallion to it as well, and nori. And to this, I'm gonna add this dashi stock. So I'm gonna eat it, just kind of like a soup. Kind of break it apart, like this. And then you have a ochazuke style. Itadakimasu. And I'm going to slurp now, so please excuse me for that. Hmm. Oh. Oh, this is just so amazing. Hmm. Really great. Hmm. Oh, this dashi stock is just kind of wrapping up everything, and all the things in here have different flavor, but all together in this dashi stock, just all in one harmony. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. So good. Only another bowl left. So I'm first gonna enjoy it just as it is. Hmm. And I like to add a little bit of wasabi and scallion. It's just gonna adds a little freshness to the flavor. And the very last bite, I'm gonna have it ochazuke style again. The last bite. Dagmas. Mm. All that flavor was just so complex, so delicious. Gosozomashita! Oh, that was totally savory, so delicious. Quite complicated and a little bit of work to make. And of course, you can just make that unagi and rice together, and then you have a perfect unadon. That's, of course, perfectly fine. I just wanted to show you a variation of this because you barely ever see this outside of Japan, i.e., outside of our region, Tokai area. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it gave you some new idea about Japanese cooking. If you like what you saw, I'll be so grateful if you could hit me the like button. And if you have any questions or requests, please feel free to write anything in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.